Listen ladies, we have a superhero. Her name is Joy, the plus size model. And she is fighting discrimination in her industry. She's a plus size model, she's fierce, she's beautiful, and she's boosting self-esteem across the country. It was such a pleasure to have the opportunity to introduce and to present this young lady in my documentary. Let's take a look at Joy, the plus size model. This thinking came up where um, for some reason they feel that there is an ideal that men can um, make an arrangement with big girls or it's okay or that's what we're here for to make an arrangement. We're going to make an arrangement. And I'll talk about it a little bit with my best friend, but I, I, I had to come back and, and revisit that. Guess who's back? Yes, it is Joy, the plus size model. I was able to hook back up with her. Wow. I'm so excited to see what she's going to say. And this time, I pushed record. Go ahead, Joy. Show me that walk. Hi, Joy. Hey. I'm so happy that we were able to reconnect and get this interview. I really wanted to make sure that you were in the documentary because you are such a positive symbol within your industry. And um, I was so disappointed that I didn't get the footage that I didn't get, didn't get that interview because it was really good. But uh, we're here now. So thank yes, God for that. And you look simply gorgeous as usual. Thank you, thank you. I try. So, first question I want to ask, like I asked you before, how long have you been in the industry? Um, going on four years in, I think July. In July, awesome. And so, within that time, um, how has the experience been? Has it been mostly positive, mostly negative? How, how would you? Um, explain that. In, in, in the modeling industry, it's a little rough in the beginning, especially being a plus size model. You have to find yourself. You have to find your confidence, um, be able to perform. But if you dedicate yourself to it, it gets easier. It gets easier. Do you see that you get uh, more opportunities to do jobs? Then um, is it about the same or do you see discrimination? Um, as it relates to smaller women? I have known of discrimination where certain people was getting paid um, and their uh, appearance appeared to be smaller mm -hmm. and the bigger models wasn't getting paid and we didn't even know nothing about it. So yeah, it's been wow. some discrimination. Wow. But the thing about that is I feel like now in these days and times that 
there are more plus size models out there and there more there's more clothing not lines that accommodate us because back in the day oh my god you had uh maybe Lane Bryant or Romans and that was it you know mm -hmm. <laughs> and you just had to pick yeah it's um it's a few lines out there for truly plus size women and it's mm -hmm. a lot of curvy plus size lines you know i was thinking about that because i'm like i like these outfits but it really wouldn't accommodate my my shape you know what i'm saying it may accommodate my size but it's not mm -hmm. flattering to my shape and i just didn't understand it i'm like you're saying you plus size so you have to know that women are shaped differently Yes. And I think where a lot of lines and boutiques and designers go wrong, you look at that picture and you see a curvy model. And mm -hmm. also that person may want to be as curvy as that model. So they promote clothes that they want to wear, not mm -hmm. clothes that flutter their body shape even. Mm -hmm. So it's hard to find something that will flatter your body shape without putting on a million spanks and I was gonna say the waist training industry. Yes. Yeah. Oh and you're just not comfortable. You're walking around with this, this this girdle on all day long, trying to look good in, in this person's outfit. And I might just make something that's gonna be flattering to me. For instance, like make this shirt to come all the way down and cover my stomach. You know what I'm saying? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Torrid Tor is good for that. I finally found out a good line for that, but yeah, okay. it's not a lot of it's not a lot of lines that cater to the fupa, as they call it. Exactly. Like, come on now. Man. So um, what are some of your, um, what are some of the stereotypes that you heard about plus size women? Uh, you too big to wear that. Mm -hmm. uh, why you, why he with you? Mm -hmm. um, uh, you can't do that. You too big. Yeah, I mean, um, I've heard where the big women, you know, they can't um, pull successful men, you know. Uh, big women are only good just to feed you, you know, or have somewhere to stay in case you get in a bind, you know, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Like, they don't look at us as women. They look at us, you know, as something else than what we are. And, and that's just so unfortunate, you know. Yeah, we're human beings just like everybody else. We got a mind of our own, and we got common sense, too. Mm -hmm. I agree with that. Um, so re relationship-wise, have you re have you experienced discrimination um, and with, with your size, or do you feel like um, some relationships um, were better or worse, or have you attracted healthy relationships, you know, just as a woman? Um... Me personally, the dating pool out here is very mm, shallow. Should I, I say? I will say that you telling the truth, and it's a lot you of the um, truth. it's a lot of BS that mm -hmm. surface. Mm -hmm. So being a woman and being a plus size woman, we have to be careful because they stereotype us so much that um, this is something that we have to live with mentally and battle ourselves every day, along with a unhealthy relationship that can tear you all the way down. I've been there. Yeah, I've done that. Mm -hmm. I've, um, I've recovered. I mean, but it's still an ongoing thing just because it's a, tra it's a traumatic situation. Yeah, my thing is just accept me for who I am. You know what I'm saying? Right. I, 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 if you can get past the aesthetics and just accept me for who I am, you'll see that I'm a wonderful person. And I'm going to do the same for you. You know what I'm saying? But we got to get to that point, you know? And it, and it really bothers me that you can't see past my weight or you can't see past the way that I'm shaped or how I'm just made up. You know what I'm saying? And it bothers me. In my opinion, I believe that they accept us for who we are, but then they find out our weaknesses and use that against us. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I can't agree. I agree, mm -hmm. but through all that, if you can find you some one body, you know what I'm saying, that's going to ride with you, you got somebody. Yeah. So, tell me, what is the most sexiest thing that a guy has done for you? Oh. Uh, mm, 
I could tell you something that was cute that was recent. Okay. So I wanted to watch Baby Kids so mm-hmm. bad. And I had been telling my friend I wanted to watch it. Mm-hmm. So we came, he came over and we uh, had a little date and he ordered it for me. Aww. And I thought that was so sweet. Yeah. You know, just the little things. It don't That's have to be sweet. nothing extravagant or nothing big. Like mm-hmm. you say, just ride with me through the little stuff. Mm-hmm. Just ride me through the little stuff. Yeah, I, I, I've had those moments. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I've really had those moments where I've had some good guys to really come through and um, do stuff without an exchange. Sometimes mm-hmm. people love you when they want something sexual back. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But to just give me something or be there for me and don't want nothing from me, that's uh, that's what's up, you know? And there are mm-hmm. some good dudes out there. We just got to find them, Joy, right? Yes, ma'am. So one more thing before I let you go, because I know that you have a full schedule. What is a message or what is some type of affirmation you can tell our young sisters that look just like us that may have low self-esteem? Um, one thing my mother told me, uh, who that brought teary eyes real quick. She used mm-hmm. to tell me to look in the mirror and tell yourself you love yourself every day, every even day. if you don't mean it. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it's going to be times where you mean it, where you know it. Sometimes it's going to be doubtful. Sometimes it's going to be times where you don't even feel like it. But it helps. Um, be true to who you are. Don't mm-hmm. change for nobody. Uh, if they can't accept you, hey, amen for you. There's billions of people in this. There's billions of people in this world that you can be associated with. And sometimes people don't have your best interest if, interest if they can't accept you for who you are. Cool and keep going no matter what and you know sometimes you gotta tell yourself you're an army of one and that's enough you're an army of one and that is enough and you don't need nobody else's validation to be you because when you wake up tomorrow you're gonna still be you that's right that's right thank you so much joy plus size model want to say this this is my bff i want to discuss with you okay which is um that big girls um are like some type of secret for black for men men in general and that um most men want to make an arrangement with a big girl uh-huh. You know, not a relationship, but they want some type of understanding where they can just come through whenever they want to come through. They right. don't say anything publicly uh, or display you publicly, but yeah. it's like you just they 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 they're a secret. They're a secret. Um, how, how do you feel when you hear something like that? Um, I believe that's that's true because I believe every guy want a big girl in their life. <laughs> <laughs> I think every guy want a big girl in their life. And like you said, they try to keep it as a secret. But um, they really want a big girl in their life. So I believe that's a true statement. I believe that's a true statement. And why not? We beautiful. Well, I, my thing is, why not display me as, you know, uh, uh, publicly? I'm not looking for you to share my picture on everything you know what i'm saying but don't not acknowledge me it's hard so what are some things that you would like to share with young girls and young uh, boys Mm because young boys suffer with low self-esteem too right um, that may look like us and that may have so low self-esteem well first i'll say uh love yourself for who you are regardless 
or what anybody think about you. You love yourself for who you are because you are beautiful. Rather, uh, and it may not be in one person's eyes, but you are beautiful in somebody's eyes, but you shall always feel like you're beautiful in your own eyes, no matter what nobody else thinks. Um, if, if you wanted to do something, um, put your weave in your hair or get a new haircut or whatever to make you feel good, they didn't do it. husband was discussing this the other day and he was asking uh what do I rate myself and I said well shoot I rate myself a seven because I feel like I look good I said, I yeah I said, you know, I'm shocked. I said, no no I said I rate myself a 10 oh. somebody, <laughs> somebody else may say oh you a seven you know mm -hmm. I said or somebody may look at you say oh you a three or whatever but to me in my eyes I'm a 10 no matter what happens. I'm a 10. <laughs> so. I'm a, actually a 12. <laughs> I see all, all young girls, and you can see like big girls, they trying to look nice. And I, you know, and sometimes I sit back and I observe how they move within the crowd. If I'm out and about and I'm just watching, you know what I'm saying? And I watch how they pull down their shirt sometime, or I watch how they try to fix their hair because they want to look presentable and they, and they want to look pretty, you know. And, and it's like, just be you, be confident, you know what I'm saying? You don't work, don't wait on somebody to say you look beautiful. Just know, wake up and know it within yourself. Right. That you're beautiful, right. Nobody has to tell me I'm beautiful. Wig on or wig off. Right. I'm still beautiful <laughs> and I'm still feeling them. Just like you know what I'm saying. But what is what is what are what is one of the sexiest things that a man has done for you? And I'm quite sure you're gonna say Troy because Troy has been with you for your whole that's, life. That's so. right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> 23 too, you ain't gotta be too graphic because I just ain't okay. No <laughs> Say, woo, let me tell you now. <laughs> no. What no. is one of the most romantic, sweetest things? I'll rephrase it. One of the right. most romantic, sweetest things that he's done for you. Okay. Um, one year for uh our anniversary. Was it my anniversary or it may have been our birthday? My birthday. But um we was at home. We didn't have a car or anything. And we was at home. And he told me to get ready that we were going to go somewhere. And I'm like, where are we going? You know, how? where are we going? We ain't got no car. How are we going to get there? You know, and he told me just just uh listen you know let me take the lead and of course i'm like uh-uh i need to know where we going you know you need to be telling me some stuff but yeah. anyway he um took me to a hotel we had one of the um like the what was those things called the car the car to come and pick you up we had a, a chauffeur come and pick us up he took me to a hotel when we walked into the room um, it was champagne, it was roses on the bed, it was outfits that I could wear for that day, it was shoes, and it was just so romantic, it was so sweet, he had already planned everything, and once we um, got there and I got dressed, he took me out to dinner, this chauffeur stayed with us for the whole weekend, and just was driving us around wherever we wanted to go, so that was the most sweetest and romantic thing that I remember. The most sweetest thing I think that ever happened to me was... Uh, it was a bunch of it was hot and um hot and uh it was a lot of sweat going on. No, I'm just playing. 